Cognitive Biases, Systematic and Predictable Errors in Thinking. In nursing, these biases impact judgment and decision making that can affect patient care and patient outcomes. This resource is intended to explain some of these biases, discuss their impact on nursing judgment, and introduce debiasing techniques that can be implemented by nurses starting today. Nurses need to assess and quickly prioritize the needs of diverse patients. Efficient thinking shortcuts are often applied in fast-paced nursing environments. How do we learn these thinking shortcuts and train our brain to take these routes? For nurses, this could be partly through education, practice, and experience. With repeated exposure to similar situations in practice, our brains determine patterns as shortcuts to streamline future encounters. These patterns may be wrongly applied during patient care when people with other conditions have similar presentations. These mental shortcuts arising from our rapid thinking centers are efficient but can be prone to errors. Our rational, analytical thinking processes are less prone to error but are also slow. Learning when we can rely on our rapid thinking and learning when to slow down our thinking can help reduce errors in our decisions. So, what are some of the examples of biases that affect nursing practice? Anchoring bias. When information is sought to explain a situation based on one piece of early information. The catastrophic effects of anchoring are demonstrated in the case of Lewis Blackman. Lewis was a 15 year old child who died four days after surgery. As Lewis deteriorated, nurses and physicians could not identify signs of a critically ill child. For example, when unable to obtain a blood pressure, it was thought to be malfunctioning equipment rather than Lewis's hypovolemic shock. Perhaps this was because the team expected, as a healthy child, Lewis would make a full recovery. The plan of care provided for Lewis was simply recover from the elective procedure and discharge home. Sadly, Lewis never went home. Confirmation bias the seeking of information to support preconceptions or initial judgments about a particular situation. Researchers found confirmation bias using eye tracking devices on nurses during a simulation. Nurses became fixed in their initial interpretation of symptoms and sought further assessment data to confirm their initial assumptions about the patient's decline. This resulted in nurses missing other essential cues and instead seeking clues to confirm an initial diagnosis. Some techniques to prevent anchoring and confirmation biases include asking, what part of my assessment doesn't fit the expected findings? Other than what I think is right, what else could be happening? If any symptoms or pieces of assessment data are outside of what is expected, asking yourself or others what else could be going on is taking thinking from fast to slow and mitigating the risk of becoming stuck in bias. Routines and expectations of providing interventions, particularly in acute care, can lend to commission bias. The tendency to provide an intervention even if intervention is not necessary. Commission bias was demonstrated in a small study on nurses weaning pediatric patients from sedation and managing potential withdrawal. Seasoned nurses were inclined to provide medication interventions for withdrawal even when the child did not meet standard criteria. This desire to do something when the best option is to do nothing at all is a type of bias. Attribution bias. When an observer wrongly makes a judgment or assumption about the cause or reasons for another person's behavior, we often assign personal blame to others for their conditions, but explain our own behavior as heavily influenced by external or contextual factors. Researchers found that the types of attributions made by nurses influenced the interventions they subsequently provided. 
consider a patient who struggles to follow their prescribed diet. If the nurse attributes this to a lack of compliance or laziness, instead of recognizing that the patient is suffering from food insecurity or mental health concerns, this can lead to erroneously providing education rather than attending to securing nutritional resources or supporting mental wellness. Although further research is needed, attribution bias may be minimized by finding out more about the patient's situation and context. Consider and ask, what else could be happening for this person? Implicit bias. Implicit bias is the tendency for stereotype confirming thoughts to pass spontaneously through our minds. Implicit bias prevents patients from receiving safe, high quality health care and contributes to health disparities through differences in assessment, treatments, and follow-up care. These implicit biases may be based on age, racial or ethnic identity, sex, gender, or sexuality, weight, or health condition, and can lead to stigmatization and discrimination. One study found nurses caring for HIV-positive patients emptied bedpans less often, wore gloves and additional PPE only with HIV-positive patients, and even segregated HIV-positive patients to rooms distant to the nurse's station. This bias influenced patient decisions not to disclose their HIV status to avoid stigmatization and risk reduced care. Another study found that nurses' weight bias contributed to low levels of sympathy for children with heavier weights and a higher likelihood of attributing the child's pain to psychological factors. Other researchers found that nurses placed a lower priority on older adults experiencing delirium in the ICU than younger patients experiencing delirium. This was found despite the known morbidity and mortality associated with delirium in older adults. There were no additional causes identified for the decisions in this study, except age of the patient. Unless we as nurses become aware of our implicit biases, we place people in our care at risk of a variety of harms, including misdiagnosis, improper triage, poor pain management, and even death. More research on reducing bias is still needed. However, there are some promising ways to overcome bias in nursing practice, and we leave you with some suggestions. Learn more about cognitive biases and reflect on how they might influence your practice. Engage in reflective practice across your nursing career, examining current and past decisions that may have been affected by bias. Learn to manage stress and reduce cognitive load. There is some evidence that mindfulness training and meditation may help with this. Work on improving your interactions with people who are different than you. Focus on building partnerships with patients and finding out their individual perspectives. Contribute to a workplace culture of shared responsibility for knowledge and safety. Identify times when you need to move your thinking from fast to slow. Slowing your thinking can help avoid errors that arise from rapid thinking processes. Nursing practice frequently requires quick judgments and decisions. These can often involve thinking shortcuts that may be prone to biases. Being wrong can feel like being right until correction is made. And thus, it is essential that nurses become aware of their biases and their impact. Changing our thoughts and our thought patterns can mean better patient outcomes and could even save lives. Nursing is full of systems and patterns, and nurses are trained to think in certain systematic ways. Attention to the thinking shortcuts we develop and working against the predictable thinking errors known as cognitive biases has the potential to create a safer place in healthcare for all.